Hello! You there! Yeah, I'm talking to you! The guy or girl with the headset on. Or earbuds. Or hitting play. <laughs> I feel like Welcome. there was just too much going on for that to be the snazzy intro. I think it was pretty fucking funny. Okay. I think I killed it. All right. I heard a lot of laughter. Huh? Welcome, well. everybody, to Common Censored. I'm joined by Eleanor Goldfield. Hello. My constant critic. <laughs> and this is the show where we talk censored stories and people, sensible solutions, and common ground movements to fight and build. And sometimes other stuff. And this is free every week uh, on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Libsyn, all those places. And I think we're, you know, we're, we're kind of one day late, but I think you're going to forgive us. If you hear how awesome this show is, you're going to forgive us. I think... <laughs> also, I just like would like to say it's like a weekly podcast. It's not a podcast that comes out on a particular day in said week. Luckily, it's we, just a weekly podcast. L- luckily, unlike unlike Bill Burr, we didn't make the mistake of naming it the Monday Morning Podcast, <laughs> which is what he did. And then I haven't listened to it in years, but I used to listen to some of them. And, you know, every third time he'd be like, welcome to the Monday Morning Coming Out on Tuesday podcast. Uh, so... Yeah, you end up in that situation, which we don't because we never we never promise nothing. All right. We didn't <laughs> promise shit. You just back the fuck off. And I think when we started the podcast, we were recording like on a Sunday. <laughs> now, and now then it just inched yeah. a little. But look, the, it's the episode is, 156, okay? The, the point shit is, moves in the real world. The, the point is at some point in the week, it tends to come out. It happens. It's you the know, same with when you swallow a penny. At some point within the week. Oh, it, it comes, out. comes out. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, You know, sometimes critics, sometimes just the voice of the audience asking me to explain my joke. That's, <laughs> she, she, <laughs> Look, it's been a long day. And if I weren't your critic, how would you know when you really have a zinger? That's all I'm I saying. I have never not had a zinger. <laughs> okay, let's... Uh, Let's get into. It. We got a lot of you. We're, we're, we'll uh, we'll talk a little about Israel, although I don't think we're going to spend it, so, <laughs> and Palestine. <laughs> uh, I don't think we're going to uh, spend that long on that because we talked about it. Uh, I've talked about it on live stream. Also, I'm Graham Elwood and I are going to do a cold government se- secrets on it. So you're getting plenty of Israel coverage and Palestine I've talked coverage. Talked about it as well. And Eleanor has talked about it as well. So. We might keep that a little short, but we will. We actually will get to a little bit coming up, so don't worry. Yeah, real quick, I just wanted to um, share something interesting. It's kind of been making the rounds on Instagram and the Twitterverse, and I'm sure the other um, social media platforms that I don't know how to use or what the fuck they're called. Tick schmuck. Tick. Tick schmuck. Tick, yeah. tick a doodle do. Tick schmuck is the name. <laughs> yes, it's just <laughs> douchebags. Um, so. This like b- kind of uh, the the name that it's been given is uh, like a paper strike, uh, which is basically like it signs taped to fast food restaurants, uh, windows, and things like that across the country, basically challenging the idea that quote no one wants to work, uh, and calling out the real re- reasons for worker shortages. Uh, well, and can I, can I just give you a little clarity? Is that for, I know many of you don't watch the mainstream media, but m- many of them have putting been putting out these reports on how. The, you know, the job increase has been lower than usual, and it's because people don't want to work anymore because they got a $1,400 check, and apparently that's going to last them for their whole lives, and so now they don't want to work anymore. That So this has been the, like, Wall Street Journal talking point. Or that, you know, unemployment uh, is paying them better than their jobs, right. and that's not the job's fault somehow that they don't pay a living wage I it's 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 a lot of mental gymnastics well, like ir- drunken mental I, gymnastics ironically even if that were true which we're going to get into why it's not true but even if that were true aren't they kind of saying look this is a miserable existence and you have to be forced into it which is not really the sales pitch of America <laughs> I mean they're saying it but they're not saying it they're once mean. again <laughs> laying the blame on the workers because hey your goal in life should be to work a shitty job until you die that should be you know, your right. goal. Right. So that your boss's boss can buy another yacht. Right. And if there were better unemployment where fewer people did work because they had enough money to not work at a job they hate, getting paid very little, getting treated like shit and probably sexually harassed, uh, that apparently is a bad thing. Because <laughs> that th- their argument is that goes against the American 
belief system of no, you should have to work at that awful job. Yeah. Um, well, and so some of these signs that are taped to these establishments, uh, some of them are pretty simple and they just say, you know, they're no, people are not working here anymore, but some of them have gone into more depth. Um, some of them have, you know, written up on, uh, on the, uh, on the pieces of paper. Uh, the, the, the management here is not willing to provide safe working conditions or a livable wage. So we're not coming back. <laughs> um, you know, basically fuck this place. Uh, and some of them have, you know, uh, even, even thrown in the, the whole capitalist structure, uh, and thrown that under the bus and said, look, this is, this is, this establishment is closed because of the machinations of capitalism. And if you don't like it, then we should do something about that. And uh, then you maybe you can get your burger. Uh, so it's really powerful to see some of these messages. And it's also really powerful to see the solidarity that's popping up in spite of, you know, the continued propaganda, basically trying to shame people into showing up for jobs that don't provide safe working conditions that don't provide a livable wage or a living wage. Uh, so I definitely encourage folks like whatever labor rights groups are in your area, connect with them and really show solidarity with these folks um, who are again, trying to be shamed into, in, into, you know, serving up <laughs> fries for seven bucks an hour in the, in well, the midst of a pandemic. Well, right. And so those people like the, you know, the Wall Street Journal and the, the business community, which means the dick bags at the top, those people who are saying, look at what you did by giving the people some form of, uh, un, you know, extra unemployment or some form of, uh, you know, a check in the mail, by giving them that, you have made it so that people don't want to work anymore because they've gotten a taste of what it's like to just sit on the couch and they don't want to work anymore. But the reality of it is, no, they don't want to work at the like worst jobs mm -hmm. where you're not getting a fifteen dollar minimum wage, no where benefits. you're yeah, you got no benefits. You're you know, and a lot of people don't talk about wage theft, which is another thing. You may think you're working for eight dollars an hour at McDonald's or ten dollars an hour, whatever it is, but then they have ways of scraping away a, a you know a, a large percentage of that, so it may factor down to nine dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so there's wage theft going on. There's just so many reasons that the uh, uh, you know the, there's there's no more safety. Like a lot of these places aren't giving them obviously any hazard pay, but any way to deal with customers who come and cough in their face and you know refuse to wear masks or whatever. Um, although I know those rules are changing in some ways, but uh, so it's like yeah, you, the, corporate America didn't stand up and help these people at all, and now people don't want to go back to those jobs. Right, exactly, and that it's it's a very important distinction to make, and uh, it offers up the opportunity to really hammer home the need for a, a you know a, a wage that is fair, and you know I, th that's the other thing too. Like I'm I'm trying to move away from the living wage thing because a wage that just allows you to survive. That's that's not good enough right. because right. we should be demanding things that allow us to thrive, not just barely scrape by with three fucking jobs living in the a basement studio apartment under a, you know, under a fucking uh, dive bar. Like we should be demanding something uh, that allows people to to have uh, to have lives. <laughs> a good time. Right. It should be a good time, which. Um. <laughs> So I'm j right now we got dying wage. Right, We're, so they're really, fighting for living wage. So really, we should be talking about a fair wage. And right, what what right. does fair mean? Of course, that could be different to to a lot of folks depending on your 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 situation too. Like if you have kids, it would be something uh, that allows you to 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 ensure that there's child care, which by the way should be fucking free. But um, I did hear at Arby's they do give you an hour break, and there's a room in the back where you can have the kid. <laughs> and then you get back and then, to work. And then get back but, to work. But they put a nice little room in there. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. Like a little beanbag situation. Yeah, a little beanbag chair, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so really, w what does a fair wage look like? And if I have the kid, I meant birth the kid. <laughs> I, was, I okay. assumed. Not, not, not put, like not procreate. Put the kid. Not like you have the kid in that room. Oh, I thought, okay. Like you put the kid in that room. Right. Yeah. Uh, there was the a really funny... Um, 
my mom has this book because she's she oftentimes uh well not I wouldn't say oftentimes but she sometimes says shit wrong because English is her second language or like her third or fourth or whatever um and so she bought this book of like funny mistranslations and one of them was a sign translated from I don't know what language but it it just said women are encouraged to not have children at the bar (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, well, I, yeah, that would be Although, well, awkward you might, for everyone. You might want to drink to take the edge off, I feel like. You know, I, the, I've i always thought that there's like far, there's like not enough drinking at births. <laughs> like, By come everyone. on, you know? By everyone involved. Like the, the kid gets a little bit of a buzz, so maybe they scream less on the way out. You feel better. The people around you are less stressed. I think it's a great time for a cocktail party. I think, you know, people that do the tub births, I think that should be filled with like vodka jello. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that being birthed into vodka jello is uh, necessarily a good idea, but, you know, hey. Your body, your choice. Um, <laughs> I think we're all glad that Lee can't give birth. Um, but can I direct births? No, you cannot. <laughs> Not unless some poor sod says you can. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, moving away from living wage and talking about a fair wage, because we we really need to be fighting for something that allows us to thrive and not just fucking scrape by the skin of our teeth. Cool. All great points. Well said. Uh, before we get to the, the next topic, uh, some, some of our stuff, uh, we want to talk about... Um, Eleanor's album is finally here. If you didn't hear the last episode, we talked a lot about that. Uh, the Sorry, I guess the correct term is EP. Uh, three new songs, two spoken word. You got to check it out. The best place to get it and support uh, Eleanor and her art is at artkillingapathy.com. Just scroll down to No Solo is the name of the album slash EP. And uh, so scroll to the no, no solo. You can uh, click buy and it's a uh, recommended donation of uh, $6 or above, whatever you feel is fair. And that's where you can grab it. Thanks. Um, oh, and uh, the Libera Pay members who are owed an album because uh, I, some of the tiers of, uh, of our membership uh, say you, you're, you get it uh, for free. You got to email us because Libera Pay is anonymous, uh, but we would love for you all to show up uh, and sign up. So that's liberapay.com slash Lee Camp, L-I-B-E-R-A-P-A-Y.com slash Lee Camp. We have no ads for anything on this show. We're not supported by anyone except for you guys. So that's L-I-B-E-R-A-P-A-Y.com slash Lee Camp. And uh, you had a note about our, uh, our solidarity fund. Yeah, just a a really quick note here. Um, So we've uh, actually two notes. Um, For those who aren't aware, during our live streams, which are on Sunday evenings, we do a fundraiser for our Solidarity Fund where folks who are watching donate money and folks who are watching can uh, can email us at commonsense or to protonmail.com and ask for some support. Um, And... uh, And so two quick notes about that. One is that um, it's not like an immediate thing. (laughs) I've had some people like email and I totally get it. I'm not like trying to give you shit. Um, I've had some people email and be like, hey, just wanted to make sure you got my previous email. I totally have. It's just that the fund like we're not quite like an ATM. (laughs) So uh, the requests will come in and we will address them as soon as we can. But it might be a few days. So just understand like I, I, I get that. Uh, sometimes you need funds immediately, but we can't we can't promise that we will get right. them right. get to them immediately. Um, the second point uh, I can totally relate to, but uh, y'all really don't need to feel bad for asking uh, for some support. Um, in, in in a system that valued uh, liberation and justice and life, uh, we wouldn't be in these situations anyway. Um, it's not your fault that these situations exist, um, and it's certainly not your fault that uh, you're you're in, you're needing to reach out for some support. So please don't feel bad about reaching out, um, and just know that we're really we're really glad that we can be this kind of facilitator and medium for funds to get to y'all. So um, yeah, that's ju- just a, a quick little note. I I totally get it. 
um, as someone who, uh, who was, uh, uh, homeless and very poor when I moved to LA, um, I totally get feeling bad about reaching out, but, um, just know that it's not a bad thing. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And, um, we're glad to be able to create this little niche community. So if you'd like to donate to help go towards, you know, for that money to go towards those who are struggling and need help, you can do that on Venmo at Lee Camp. All of the donations that come in on Venmo at Lee Camp go are, are paid forward to those who email common censored at protonmail.com and say they need some help. So that's Venmo at Lee Camp if you wanted to donate to that effort. Uh, we have a live stream on Sunday. Keep an eye out for that Sunday nights. And uh, Eleanor's movies at hardroadofhope.com. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's keep going. So this was actually a listener uh, suggested topic, and y'all are welcome to send those to the same email address, commoncensored at protonmail.com. Um, and this was about South Carolina, South Kakalaki, mm-hmm. um, where legislators uh, voted to. Uh, force death row inmates to either face the electric chair or a firing squad when lethal injection is not possible. Um, and really, what what is nothing what, like a firing squad, you know, really to to pep up your morning. Well, we'll get into that in a second. But what's happened basically is that uh, there's a shortage of the drugs needed to carry out lethal injections. Um, and th- you know, there's several reasons for it. Um, but there have been some, some pharmaceutical companies have been, uh, reticent and some countries, uh, because, um, lethal injection, the way that, the way that it works is that, um, it basically ha- like a- as people who have gotten it, you know, as they're dying have said, it feels like they're burning up from the inside. So it's like you're being burnt at the stake, but inside. Right. And it and takes a long time. Like, it's not quick. Uh, so there's a shortage of the drugs. And, uh, it, it, you know, no matter how it's done, whether it's done really humanely and the person's like, ooh, I feel great, and then dies, uh, a lot of people don't want to be, or certain countries don't want to be connected to our murder machine. Right. You know, we do it very differently, where we're like, oh, you want to kill some people? Here are some weapons. Uh, so we're different than that, but a lot of countries are like, yeah, we're not going to ship you those drugs. So. Um, so the interesting thing here is that, uh, they're actually, here's a little, uh, trivia for you. (laughs) What other three states allow death by firing squad? Uh, oh, so Idaho, Utah, and Oklahoma. You got two out of three. (laughs) But I don't oh, know wow. what your da- deal is with the potato state because <laughs> Idaho is not on that list. So mm. it's Damn Mississippi, it. Oklahoma, and Utah. I'm actually really impressed I got two out of three. <laughs> Me too, actually. I would have been completely wrong. I wouldn't have guessed Utah. Um, so You would have said Disney World, wouldn't you? <laughs> just Disney World. Not Florida, but just Disney World. Um, so... And this is actually not something that's like just way back when. The most recent death by firing squad happened in Utah in 2010, where the inmate actually requested death by firing squad uh, rather than the chair because he said that it it went it went quicker, uh, which is true. <laughs> well, and, here, and here's the thing: in in the United States, we have so many mass shootings. If you want death by firing squad, you can just like go out to a mall. Or something. <laughs> So. Dark man, dark. <laughs> um, I just had this image of like a fucking like just prison guards wandering around a mall with a with a with a prisoner like waiting for some mass shooter. Um, that's that's <laughs> a Black gu- Mirror episode him toward, right then there. They, then they hear the popping off in the different store, and they're like, "Forever twenty one, forever twenty one." <laughs> they run him over there. Oh my god, that. Are oh. we getting? Are we getting too dark? <laughs> it's a. You know what you should do? You should message the. Uh, Shit! The it's at the elementary school. We got to get to the elementary school. <laughs> the creators of Black Mirror on that one. Yeah. Um. So. So yeah, this is uh something that is like crazy to fucking think about. 
But I think like, and I'm not actually sure how the listener was, uh, the, the listener suggested this story and said that this is disgusting. I'm not sure what angle they were coming at. So I'm not saying that we're coming at it from a different angle, but I think like the way that some people are reporting about this and the way that there's pushback from some lawmakers is like, oh my God, death by firing squad. That is so archaic and inhumane. And I'm like, um, so a fucking electric chair right. and lethal injection that takes like several minutes and you're like burning up on the, in- that's not fucking inhumane. Like, are you fucking kidding they're, me? Like, yeah, they're all inhumane and disgusting and barbaric and animalistic and it's pathetic. Right. Like you're a pathetic human being if you think execution needs to still be a punishment. Yeah. And so the problem isn't, like the firing squad necessarily it's the problem that south carolina lawmakers are like look we have to kill people (laughs) so if these drugs aren't available we're either gonna fucking uh you know light you up like a christmas tree or uh we're gonna take you out back and uh you know old yeller it like those are the only options like because we have to we obviously couldn't stop killing people (laughs) and you know fun fact i covered this recently on my other podcast government secrets uh, the the electric chair and that whole form of execution only came about because Thomas Edison, Edison wanted to make Tesla look terrible because they were had they had different types of electricity current that they were trying to sell to America, basically get America to switch to. Uh, Tesla had alternating current and Edison had direct current, and so Edison came up with the electric chair in order to put alternating current through it, show people being fried Mm -hmm. and be like, this is what happens to those who get near alternating current. And he did multiple uh, demonstrations in front of the press, starting with things like dogs, horses, and a circus elephant named Topsy. Yes, he electrocuted to death a circus elephant. If you'd like to go uh, check that out, you can. And ultimately, they got up to an inmate where they finally got approval from some prison, you know, I can't remember, Rhode Island, Connecticut or something, uh, to execute an inmate with this. And basically, they they fried him for a bit, uh, ha, you know, had killed him, and the guy steps forward. He was working, Edison was working with another inventor to create this monstrosity. And that guy steps forward and said, Behold, the electric chair, the most humane way. And that's when they realized the guy was still alive and he started moaning and the whole crowd gasped. And then they, you know, cranked wow. up the voltage even more till the point that smoke was coming out of his head. And then they decided he was actually done. I mean, it's been barbaric from day one. And another fun fact, uh, this didn't actually work at all from a press angle because rather than people going, oh, alternating current is dangerous, they went, electricity is dangerous. Right, And of it, it didn't actually help Edison at all. He ultimately lost. Alternating current is the law of the land now. So, Yeah, uh, which is why um, if you... The way that alternating current works is that it creates a loop. Uh, that's why, like, if you are... If you put your hand in a socket or something, um, that's why you are stuck to it, like... Because it is using you as, um, as like it as as a what's it called? Um, conduit. Thank you. As a conduit to run through. Um, conductor. Like, uh, yeah, it's using you as a conductor, which is why like you can't remove your hand, which is why it's so fucking scary. Um, but that'd be the same for the direct current, wouldn't it? No. Direct current wouldn't would kill fewer people. Well, you can remove your hand. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Anyway, um, so <clears throat> that's why, like, hold on, I gotta stick my hand in the soccer real quick. <laughs> okay. Test this out. Um, so, and 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 another reason that this angle is fucked is because, um, you know, one one lawmaker when they were pushing back against this said, "We can't do the firing squad. Squad. That's what North Korea does." <laughs> and it's like, what? Uh, okay. Um. So, and then of course, like there's also reports of the United Arab Emirates using it and it's like, oh yeah, because the problem isn't that we kill people. It's that we kill people the way North Korea does. There aren't even (laughs) that many countries left that still execute people. So just by being on that list, especially the fact that we do it more than most countries that still do it, uh, just being on that list is, we should be scared. 
like, yeah or, and, or ashamed. And shamed. ashamed yeah uh yeah no it's awful and and again like the angle is just totally fucking wrong um and to be honest like this is not the point of this story but to be honest if my choices were lethal injection electric chair and firing squad i would go with firing squad to be honest because if usually it's you know a squad and they put a little target over your heart and you know hopefully they aim correctly i'd rather have that than being strapped to a fucking you know car battery um i if i got my choice i'd go with cigarettes <laughs> it'd be slow. nice if they gave you the option of like a slow one yeah. you know the, the nice nice slow death but it's like you know if we're going to do lethal injection why not morphine you know, where you just fall I asleep. I, I know. Because they, yeah, I don't know. But They're, I'll tell But that that's kind awful. of a rhetorical question because the whole point of the death penalty is punishment and pain, right? The idea of a death penalty that just allows you to fall asleep doesn't have the, the literal bang that people, that these sick fucks want with the death penalty. They want it to be painful because it, 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 that's the whole point of the death penalty. Yeah, but on the average electric chair, how long is the guy in pain? Like for like a 30 seconds I or something? I have I mean, no idea. Yeah, I think it's fairly quick. So it's, it's all fucking stupid. Absolutely. It's fucking stupid and and they grotesque. And they swab your arm before they give you the injection because they don't want you to get an infection. So. I know. That's, I think... Yeah. It was a Carlin line. It was a Carlin line. Well, it was a Carlin line, but I think people had talked about that before. Like, why are you swapping his arm? Like, uh, Yeah, so um, thanks for suggesting that. And yeah, it's fucking, it, it's fucking awful. It's grotesque. Regard, I mean, firing squad, electric chair, whatever the fuck. It's all disgusting. Indeed. And we don't have time to get into all of the ways that the uh, death penalty is fucking horrific. All the innocent people, et cetera, et cetera. But you've talked about it. I talked about it on Government Secrets. Actually, well, the reason we brought it up on Government Secrets, which is a good thing to mention here, is that just recently, and this, they're, they're, they estimate that 5% or so of people executed are 100% innocent. Now, obviously, if you add those who were defending themselves, those who... Uh, accidentally killed someone, you know, those type of things, you'd get a much higher percentage. But 5% are like literally weren't even there uh, uh, or ha or killed the people at all. Um, and so that's what they estimate. But rarely do they have like hardcore proof that someone was innocent after being executed. And yet I don't have his name on me, but it came out recently that this inmate had been executed four years ago and they now have the DNA proof that yeah, I saw that. He was not involved I saw in that. the murder at all. So uh, let's yeah. uh, let's let him go now, right? right. We yeah. made a mistake. Let's let him go. All right. Shall we move on to uh, to uh, the upbeat, a more upbeat topic like Palestine? <laughs> well, this is actually a, a a good a good little note that. I believe it was Wednesday, May 12th, pro-Palestinian demonstrators took over Downing Street in London, which are that that's where the offices of the prime minister are, demanding that England cease aid to Israel. And folks might have seen images from images and video from protests around the world that were excuse me, that we're speaking in defense of Palestine and condemning the continued aid to Israel. So I think th those are good yeah good things to highlight yeah so no i've actually been i get that we're in a filter universe a filter bubble where you are more likely to see the things you agree with but i've been pretty impressed with all of the support that's coming out for palestine i mean yeah, absolutely. andrew yang was fucking dragged he was for his garbage tweet about i stand with the people of israel who are being hit by bombs from gaza you had a great response to that uh, you want the exact wording? Well, I mean, if possible. Oh, Jesus, put me on the spot. You paraphrase yourself. Yeah, but I wanna, I wanna, get, I wanna get it right though. <laughs> sing a, sing a short song. Now here it is. Uh, <laughs> to fill the time. So Andrew Yang said, "I'm standing with the people of Israel who are coming under bombardment attacks and condemn the Hamas terrorists. The people of New York will always stand with our brothers and sisters. I love how he speaks for everyone in New York. Our brothers Just and like sisters Netanyahu speaks in, for all Jews, right? In Israel, who face down terrorism and persevere. 
And my response was, I'm standing with the people who have been trapped in an open-air prison all their lives, get four hours of electricity a day, and can't even leave for emergency medical procedures. Ask yourself who you really are, Yang. Amen, brother. Uh, and I'm proud to say that, that a lot of people saw that tweet, and that is not the only one like that. People were tearing him apart because he has no fucking... He, he, just wants, he just wants Jewish votes in New York, which... As uh, as a Jew, atheist by choice, Jewish by birth. As a Jew, uh, I I'm offended that he's using the Jewish mm-hmm. people to try and get elected while he doesn't even seem to understand the fucking issue. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and yeah, no, it's grotesque. And I think there there's there's also been some great posts out there about how to support the Palestinian movement. Uh, you know, comments on BDS, uh, which is boycott, divest, sanctions, and ways to uh, w- ways to continue support uh, in in, ver- in a variety of ways, though you may be remote. And also, just a quick little—I know I like this is my fucking tagline for this show. Just a quick little note. I like your quick little notes. They're <laughs> but my, that's the problem. They're, they're my not part. quick. They're neither quick nor little. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> I. <laughs> Because brevity is just not my fucking thing. All right. How about just a big, long note? Okay. A big, long note. Here we go. Just give me one second for a big, long note. (laughs) So I was having this conversation yesterday, actually, and talking about how people are coming down on the the concept of protests. And look, I've done this, too, particularly if it's like a permitted march, which I now call parades, because if it's a march then it's not permitted you don't ask permission to fucking take the streets <laughs> anyway can we, may, we, may we please have permission to protest Ossifer, you Ossifer, can we please, please? Can we, can we please? Uh, no no you may not protest us but please okay for a minute just for a minute <laughs> this is your free speech soon go yeah. uh so i think it's important to to t- again, like talking about angles, how we view protests. And I think the problem is, is that a lot of people think of protests as this is what's going to change the world. When, no, to be honest, what changes <laughs> the world is community organizing and direct action. So, you know, like stopping a pipeline and organizing in your community to ensure that people aren't evicted or whatever. Th- those are the things that change the world. Protest. Look at protests like the... Uh, like a welcoming party for new people and a very overt advertisement. I don't like to use the word advertisement, right. but I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, okay, like a theater, uh, a theater performance, a theatrical performance to get your point across to people who aren't hearing it normally. Because when you're walking down a street and new people are seeing it, they might go, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. I'm going to look up what stop line three means. And, and even even not just walking down the street, but like when, you know, parents bring their kids to things yeah. like that, or let's say, you know, even adults bring a friend who agreed with them but had never been to a protest. It's right. like this is showing people what it is to stand for these things. Right, and to to be in community with other folks who care about them, you know, like neighbors or like you said, family members or what have you going to a protest together and then that rippling outwards. Uh, and I think that, that that the importance of that really shouldn't be diminished and the importance of also using protests as a way to celebrate, using protests as a form of, uh, of, of like joyful... Um, release, yeah, you know? That, isn't that funny? If they call it a protest and it's like a an hour or a spot, you know, with signs and stuff, then I'm kind of like, I'm kind of disenchanted because I'm like, this isn't really a protest. But if they were to call it a block party, right. I'd be like, this is awesome. Exactly. And <laughs> I'd that's, be like, I love this. That's kind of my point. Like, we should stop thinking about protests as if they were the only key to a new world. Because they're not, okay? And that's like okay. A, like a police, like, hey, police don't kill black people block party. I'd right. Like, yeah. Uh, an FTP block party. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm all for it. And so I think that FTP is fuck the police, by the way. Uh, so I, I think that we have to shift our thinking about what protests mean. And then we'll not only have respect for them as a tactic in terms of welcoming in new people and letting off steam and celebrating and being in community with folks, but we'll also recognize the importance of those other tactics uh, for being what they are. So that's just my, my big long note on that.
I like Punch your big long note. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> maybe maybe we need to do a, just change this to a show of big long notes. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, let's see what do we? Oh, oh shit! Wait, there's a little bit more. Yeah, there's a not so footnote on this on this topic of Palestine. Does this count as a big long note? Another big long note? <laughs> God damn it! So. No, because as soon as I say this sentence, I think we'll we'll be done here. There's, there's nothing. I, there's nothing I can say to follow this one up. Biden's spending plan for 2022 would give 1.3 billion dollars more to the Israeli military than to international climate programs. Nice. And for those of you thinking like, well, okay, that's terrible, but also those two have nothing to do with each other. Actually, the military is like the most horrific like climate causing entity in the world as well as the israeli military so it actually does have a connection uh besides just the fact that when that money's going to israeli military it's not going to other things um but yes i i saw someone posted and i haven't done the math but this sounds about right to me uh that 10 million the u.s government pays israel 10 million dollars a day to support their apartheid state, to support the oppression of the Palestinians, to uh, support their ridiculous military that's only only seems not ridiculous when in comparison to ours. Uh, $10 million a day, yet they can't guarantee Americans $15 minimum wage. Yeah, nor can they guarantee a livable future because they're too busy by proxy oppressing Palestinians. So, yeah. Important, important thing to highlight, not just because it's Biden, but also because it really highlights the priorities of the U.S. empire. At least we know our priorities. <laughs> That's true. At least we're clear on that. At least we're clear on that. So you mentioned a second ago about pro uh, protests against pipelines. Uh, this, I actually wouldn't, I don't know that this counts as a protest because I think they did it. It's ransomware. I think they're doing it for money. But it's still kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, well, if you're in, if you're in the South, then I, I suppose you're not enjoying this right now. But well, but it could be a moment to to reflect on how fragile our society <laughs> is. Okay. Well, there is that. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to make lemonade over here. <laughs> also, pointing out that we have to get the fuck away from fossil right, fuels right. ASAP. I, I, yeah, I was gonna say that. I was gonna say like like no, I don't like seeing and you know the people who suffer the most again are the poor the poorest people so i don't like seeing poor people unable to afford gasoline to get to their job of it's course. not like i'm like yay but here's the thing guess what you switch away from fossil fuels which are killing us you wouldn't have this problem mm -hmm. so what the fuck are we talking about we're talking about the cyber attack that forced the shutdown of one of the u.s's largest pipelines not so ironically called the colonial pipeline <laughs> Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, no, it's literally called that. <laughs> so it shut down. I just down, wanted to give the indigenous a better reason to protest. Right? It shut down 5,500 miles of pipeline, which carries 45% of the East Coast's fuel supplies. So hence your trouble at the pump. And basically it was a, again, it was a, a, a cyber attack. And as... As far as I understand at this point, they still don't have the details as to as to really what went down. Uh, but they've <laughs> basically these things are run by, you know, they're run on like computers. They're, it's not like some guy out there with a, you know, a wheel or like a hamster wheel making these things run. <laughs> it's cranking. I thought it was all Amish. I thought all of our oil pipelines were Amish. <laughs> It's, there's a there's a there's a pipeline right next door to it called the Amish pipeline. So basically, the the Guardian's reporting that the precise nature of the attack is unclear, including including who launched it and what the motives were. And the uh, spokesperson for the company declined to say whether the company had received a ransom demand, as is common in attacks from cyber criminal syndicates. And by the way, uh, although they were hinting at this for a while, because it's been a few days since it started. Uh, they were hinting at this for a while. Oh, I bet it was Russia. I'm sure Rachel Maddow probably said that. Of course. Uh, the reports, even on mainstream media uh, today, are that this is not Russia or Soviet former Soviet bloc connected. Yeah, well, I, 
Yeah. So there was ransomware involved, although there hasn't been reports of a specific ransom. And, and basically what ransomware is, it, it scrambles the, uh, the, 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 the target's data with encryption. And then the people who did the cyber attack leave instructions about how to negotiate ransom payments. And once they're paid, they provide the decryption keys in order for them to get back the data. And, and it's actually pretty hilarious when it's done against the right targets. So, like, they've been doing it a lot against, like, local sheriffs and things like that. So you end up with, like, U.S. police stations having to pay, like, a million dollars or $10 million. Like, money that to them is a lot of money in order to just get their systems back. <laughs> And all of their data. And lots of times they have to pay it because even the fucking FBI doesn't know how to stop this shit. Yeah. Well, oh, and, uh, you know, you, you mentioned the Russians, Lee. So apparently... I the, heard of them. <laughs> the Intercept reported a story in... Uh, when was this? This was in... Doo -doo 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 -doo, December. Oh, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve 2020. They reported that the Russians dun, 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 had attacked a Texas-based SolarWinds IT company, which left tens of thousands of customers exposed, which I don't really know what exposed means. They ripped their underwear off. <laughs> so, but basically the Intercept was saying that it was the Russians. So, you know. But uh, By the way, the, the Intercept, I think we've talked about this before, but they're like... It really depends on which journalists you point to at The Intercept. Some of them, there's like two that do good work there. But in general, there's all this like standard kind of MSNBC, anti-Russia kind of garbage that they've been putting out as well. So you can't just say like, oh, it's The Intercept. Oh, I trust them anymore, which I think start it started that way. Like mm -hmm. in the first year, you could point to The Intercept and even pretty serious activists were like, oh, yeah, that's legit. And now it's like the intercept. Well, hold on. Is yeah, exactly. It garbage. Is it James Risen? Or? Well, and uh, and the line here. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> did, you, did you just sing a burp? That was <laughs> that was crazy. That was. <laughs> that, that shows what a talented singer you are. That you you just burp like song tunes. So the line of this article that ties it to Russia. Get ready, everyone. Quote, government officials have linked the hack to Russia, end quote. And done. <laughs> and That's done. all we need. <laughs> I just need it to say, all I need is something that says, Russia did it, dash CIA. And I'm like, there you go. There is literally no other commentary about how they know that it was Russia or any of that shit. I mean, even the New York Times now is like, we got an email from, it was CIA at gmail.com, and they said Russia, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's, a, here, I, I'm sorry, they do, they do mention Russia again. I, I apologize. They asked someone named James Lewis, who's a former government official who oversees cybersecurity programs at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, who said, quote, it's so many people in the government attributing this to Russia. You wouldn't get that sort of statement if there wasn't something there, end quote. Right, right, right. <laughs> because you Russiagate were... wasn't a thing that I, happened. I know. We've only been doing this for four years, right. this fake garbage. And But yeah, you would never see such a thing. My favorite was uh, when uh, I just happened to flip it on. It was like Rachel Maddow, who I almost never watch, but I will watch sometimes to trash whatever garbage she's doing. She was interviewing the former campaign manager of Hillary Clinton, and he's talking about how they knew Russia had been behind the hack to destroy Hillary Clinton. And literally he was like, uh, the, we found out that they did most of their hacking during uh, like Russian time zone hours. Like literally, these were the, that was their reasoning. Is like it, we saw they signed off, you know, about when it would get to be evening in Russia. <laughs> uh, and like it was just shit like that, or like they took they took a day off, and it was the day off they took from hacking was like a Russian holiday. Like it's amazing the yeah. shit that these clowns will talk about. Yeah. So, yeah, good a, a good moment to bring up the uh, the you know sometimes ickiness of the intercept by the way this was kim zetter i don't recognize that name but now i do and will not be <laughs> will not be going to that person <laughs> but anyway kind of circling back to the co the colonial pipeline uh so this is 
basically this is uh, prompting a lot of people to talk about the cybersecurity in the United States and how we have to bolster it against the attacks of these nefarious Russians or Russian friends, I guess, who are people who care about the environment. <laughs> I so so yeah, so though it's unclear who did this, uh what their goals were in terms of demands or or what have you. They, some they may have just been guessing, but some interview I saw they were talking as if a ransom request had been made. But oh, so maybe well this I don't know whether from, they were just theorizing. Uh hold please. This article is from Saturday, May eighth. So there, there very well may be. So uh, maybe updates. they have put out the ransom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if there are updates, I apologize. I have not <laughs> been been up on those. Although that'd be great if there was like a climate activism group that was like, "We've stopped this pipeline to protect the planet, or give us money." I know. <laughs> <laughs> We have to we have to we have to buy gear for all the tree sits and shit. Right, right. So yeah, but those I those poop buckets don't make themselves. <laughs> we need more sawdust. So yeah, this is uh interesting news, if nothing else. And again, it really shows the fragility of our society when it's tied to something as destructive, as horrifically uh what's the word? Outdated? Mm. Archaic? Antiquated. Antiquated as fossil fuels. So we but have I to like do out, better. I'm, I'm going to go with outdated. I like outdated. Great. You do that. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you fly that flag. We really have to fucking do better. And it's not because of the Russians. We have to do better because planet. Very true. Very so, true. Yeah. You know, the Russians have stopped using fossil fuels too. And for that, if there there's a report Maddo could do. Russians have stopped using fossil fuels. Would would she you think she'd cover that? You know, you just have to use you just have to put the same amount of stank on the word Russians. But uh, yeah. Russians. The Russians. Uh <laughs> you know they're dying to say the Soviets. But uh <laughs> I'm surprised they don't slip up more often. J- uh Jeremy Scahill put out a tweet, uh speaking of the intercept, you know. I still Scahill's been been slipping the past few years but anyway he put out a good tweet that was uh that was he did a search on rachel maddow's uh website or whatever like the msnbc website for her show and you can search for segments from her shows they they search the whole transcript so it's not just the title of the segment this whole transcript and he did a search over the past month for the word uh, palestine or israel Mm. or or gaza or israel and and there were zero results yeah, it's almost like she doesn't fucking talk about what matters. <laughs> but there were 372 results for Russia. Uh, well, yeah, that's not surprising. I'm surprising. I'm surprised she didn't just say that it's Russia's fault that the Palestinians are are struggling. She's been calling them the Russiastinians. So. <laughs> so I want to share this story with y'all because this is just another feather in the cap of assholery. So does ass does an asshole have a cap? <laughs> now it does. <laughs> so you got to cover it with something. <laughs> so this is um, the where where the fuck is this? Uh, the governor of what? <laughs> a governor. Let's just say a Connecticut. Governor. Oh, there we go. Thank you. The governor of Connecticut, a uh, governor Ned Lamont, has called on the National Guard. Pray for what, you might ask? Well, the governor is asking for the National Guard to be at the ready because people who work at a nursing home (laughs) are going on strike. Potentially. Potentially. What in the fuck? So, beginning... You're going to shoot elder care aides? (laughs) Yeah. Beginning on or about tomorrow, Friday, May 14th, the National Guard would be at the ready in case this, you know, crazy ass strike pops off and people walk away from the wheelchairs demanding better pay and better working conditions. wildcat strike, sticking a wrench in the wheels of the wheelchairs. (laughs) So 
he Lamont said, "quote uh, that he you know he's calling on uh, the armed forces basically to support the Department of Public Health as needed in quote protecting the public health and safety." in response to any potential work stoppage or strike of workers at long-term care facilities or other congregate settings in the state. What the fuck? That word salad basically means I need guns. I'm afraid of people who administer sponge baths Uh, (laughs) because they might stop administering them. And then what will we do? (laughs) I I would like to see that battle though. I'd like to watch that battle of the, the, the elder care aides just, throwing pudding cups and bedpans at the National Guard. I think that'd be a good time. And so here, here's here's the other thing. So basically, uh, according to the governor's office, the Guard would be ma- there to ensure uh, that the people that are on strike are providing care, which I think a strike means that you're not working. So... The whole point of the strike is to not be doing what you were doing before. There, the the governor's office also pointed out that the National Guard would not be providing care inside the facilities, which I think we can all just whoo oh, that breathe would, a sigh of relief on that yeah, one. Yeah, we're 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 really <laughs> <laughs> send the soldiers in. They'll sponge bath them. Just just send them. No, send them in. Just <laughs> so. Del, what do you need? An enema? He's got it. This, guy, <laughs> this guy's going to do it. He just has to put his AR-15 his, down for a second. Yeah. His, it's, it's the safety's on. I mean, he's going to use the AR-15, but there's no bullets in it. <laughs> it's just filled with uh, <laughs> enema sauce. Epsom salts, really. <laughs> so, of course, the answer to this is not the National Guard, right? It's to deliver what people are striking over which is uh severe staffing shortages a lack of ppe which is personal protective equipment and inadequate state oversight during the pandemic so i don't know you could fucking do something about that and let the national (laughs) guard well alone and then people i don't know would be getting the proper care that they deserve and the people at those care facilities would be able to manage the workload because they'd have enough people working there and so the, the the thing to remember here is that people are already not getting adequate care because there's a staffing shortage. And they're already not getting adequate care because the people who are staffed are not available to protect themselves and the people they're caring for because they don't have the proper uh, COVID uh, re- you know, regulations inside the, the, the spaces and they don't have PPE. So it's already fucked. It's not like, oh, it's great and we're going on strike. People don't fucking go on strike when it's great. Right. It's fucked. People are, are this is a way to demand that things change. And what you do when that happens is you listen to what they demand. You don't threaten them with people with fucking Uzis. I feel like it's pretty logical and self-explanatory. We don't use Uzis. That's a real Soviet thing. So oh, I'm we, sorry. Yeah, we're not we're not doing the Uzis. I'm a Russian spy. Uh, I just outed myself. <laughs> the yeah, and and also this speaks to the kind of the American mindset, especially the American ruling elite mindset of if I have any problem, answer is guns. Mm-hmm. Guys with guns, people with guns, ships with guns. And so the idea that there could be a problem that cannot be solved with a gun, uh, I think I think there's a quote about this. If you're a tool, then you use a hammer or something like that. Uh, <laughs> so, like yeah. That. So this guy's a fucking tool, and he thinks that uh, every problem can be solved with a hammer. So he's sending guys with guns to be like, you sponge bath that woman! You sponge bath her now! I will shoot your fucking head off! Take the sponge! Take the sponge! And begin the bath. <laughs> I will kill your family. Yeah, that's America. <laughs> <laughs> Empty that pen pan. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Yep. God bless America. All right. I think we're just about at the conclusion of this one. Did you have fun? Do you think we did good work here? I, you know what? I feel good. I, I feel pretty good. And I, 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 I hope all of you at home do too. 
Uh, we love you guys joining us. And as you hopefully have gathered, we've started this kind of solidarity fund, uh, you know, and, and it depends on whether the donations are matching the number of people that need help and that kind of thing. So, you know, there'll be times where we can't get to everybody. There'll be other times where we uh, have enough to give a little extra or something. So if you wanted to donate to that, you can do it on Venmo at Lee Camp is the Venmo, the Venmo account. All of those donations will go to help people who are struggling right now. And if you are struggling, you can email commonsensor to protonmail.com. You can also email there if you have questions for us or anything. But keep in mind, bear in mind that the help we're giving is, you know, 50 to $100. It's not uh, thousands of dollars. So emailing us and saying that you're... Uh, you need to replace uh, one kid with a, another kid and he has to be flown in from the Philippines and it's a whole adoption situation, then that's we're not going to be able to get to that. So. For many reasons, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thank you guys. And you got to get Eleanor's album. If you uh, want to shit. hear a taste, you're welcome to listen to a taste of it on Spotify. The It's called, it's called No Solo. Look up the name Eleanor Goldfield. But please buy the purchase the album because yes. Spotify gives nobody nothing and it does not support her or her work or anything. So go to Art Killing Apathy, artkillingapathy.com and scroll down to No Solo. Yeah, thank you. And uh, did you get your stuff? I did know. I want to make sure that you're not just. Did I get my stuff? Pedestaling me over here. Uh, redacted tonight government stuff, secrets Lee, moment Lee, of clarity Lee Camp well the, the key thing is all it's all at LeeCamp.com although LeeCamp.com is a brand new site so that's exciting Woo! there's still some glitches so that's not exciting so you can go to LeeCamp.com we're trying to get any glitches worked out so if you open a video and it doesn't play or something don't worry we're working on it uh, but yeah it's all at LeeCamp.com we have a live stream coming up on Sunday the best way to find out about those is to join our email list by texting the word redacted to 33777 thank you guys until next time act out keep fighting <laughs>